movable signs easier. Huh? And uh, dual signs are somewhere in the middle. So now he talks about the houses. There we go. Okay. The trine houses, the first, fifth, and the ninth, are probably the most important houses in the chart. From the first house, you see the self, the person himself, the body, the mind, the desires, and so on. From the fifth house, you see relationships with other people, partnerships, family, and so on. And from the ninth house, you see the relations with God. Uh, the ninth house is very important. It's always called the house of religion. And it's called Dharma, the house of Dharma. So we can see from the ninth house, especially, how a person relates to God, what type of religion or what type of spiritual practice they're suited for. Uh, how, or, and another way to look at it is how they manifest their uh, spiritual activities. Are they a fundamentalist? Are they progressive? Uh, are they radical? Are they eccentric? Are they individual? Or are they very conservative and follow the herd? Or, you know, what is their spiritual orientation? So uh, now he mentions arudas. Arudas are a very important concept in Vedic astrology. Basically, uh, you have two charts. You have the natal chart, and then you have the Aruda chart. And the natal chart is the person themselves, how they are on the inside, uh, the actual self of the person. And the Aruda chart is how the world sees them. Uh, so depending on the person's occupation or activities, this a Ruta chart can be very important. For example, someone who's engaged in politics, uh, image is everything. How the world sees them is going to determine their success or failure. So the Aruda chart is very, very important to determine um, the results of their activities and their career. Whereas if someone is engaged in a more internal thing, let's say they're a philosopher or a writer or something like that, then it's going to be more involved with their own internal process. You know, uh, how can I finish my new novel on time? <laughs> Something like, some question like that. You would look in the natal chart for the answer. So uh, Arudas is a relatively advanced concept according to Parashara. It does not occur until mm, about three-fourths of the way through the first section of BPHS. So we'll, we'll be talking a lot about how and where these different topics appear because some of them are quite advanced. So then he mentions that the natal chart is good for uh, seeing the karma that the person brings into their lifetime with them, whereas the Navangsha chart is very good to see Parabdha karma, or how that karma is going to manifest. Uh, just like one of our moksha karma, sorry, moksha karaka combinations is when the atma karaka is in mina in the navangsa chart. Uh, that means that uh, they're in the final birth or in the final, uh, like in the home stretch of their material existence and they're just about ready they've learned all the lessons there are to learn in this material life and they're ready to get out okay the 12th house and also the sign of Mina uh, Mina Rashi are always associated with liberation so we put a lot of stress on that because we're looking for people specifically who want to get out of this material world and moksha karaka is one of the best indicators in a chart of a person who is really serious about spiritual life and self-realization. It means they have a very strong desire to uh, 
get out of this material world. And we want to be associated with people like that. Okay, the next page. What are you doing? Okay. Uh, now he mentions the prashna chart. A prashna chart is a special technique that's mm, only mentioned in passing in BPHS, but it has become very prominent in the uh, modern practice of Jyotish uh, because people have questions that they want to answer. In other words, astrology has become uh, about fortune telling. Uh, and so this prashna technique has evolved as a means to answer people's questions in real time. Basically what you do is you make a chart for the moment of the question. Uh, when someone comes to see a, an astrologer in India, they'll do a chart of that time. And that shows the influences that are currently acting. Uh, for example, on the uh, web there are so many astrology sites that talk about the astro weather or the current influences on the different signs. And some of them are pretty good. Like we use the Yahoo one almost every day because it's really accurate, amazingly enough, even though it's based on sun signs. So um, Prashna chart is a good indicator if you know how to read it. Uh, but we consider this an advanced technique and we don't cover it in our astrology course because it's not really covered by Parashara. Uh, nevertheless, there are whole books and series of books just on Prashna. Uh, it's, a, it's a very developed technique in modern astrology. Could, could we light some incense? There's, there's too much smell. The people next door are cooking garlic or something. Yeah. Uh, Varga charts. That's what I was trying to remember. The Varga charts. Varga charts can also show karma. And specifically the D12 chart, the Dvada Sanksha chart. Uh, shows karma coming from the family. The family lineage, you know, as it says in the Bible, the sins of the fathers are visited upon the children unto the 12th generation or something like that. Well, uh, the uh, Varga charts can show the different sources of karma that are coming from self, family, and so on. And uh, we can look at the uh, Varga charts to see how much karma the person is bringing into this life that might not even be from them. It might be due to their family. And a good question is, well, how is this karma passed down to someone? Well, the fact is, uh, we're born from our mother's and father's bodies. And in the process of gestation and early childhood, then we have to hear from them and experience with them and we pick up on so many of their habits and their uh, ways of expressing themselves. And these become very deeply embedded in the mind. If you do a study of depth psychology, you'll find out that the prenatal period is very, very influential in the later emotional life of the child. So if a person has a difficult prenatal period, then um, that can mark them for their whole life. On the other hand, we read about Vedic sages, including Parashara himself, also Shukadeva Goswami, who learned the Vedas in the womb. Uh, so it's possible for the soul to absorb a lot of knowledge while in the womb. And um, we also pick up on our uh, parents' karma and their different ways of looking on the world uh, while we're in the womb. So uh, if anyone wants to know, how is this karma passed down? That's one mechanism. OK, before we get into the next section, I think we should change the tape because this might take some time. This is a good time if you have any questions.
Okay, roll them. Any question? So when the soul first falls to the material world, does one take an animal form or a human? Uh, can you change, move the LCD? Usually, when someone falls to this material world, they come in at a very high level because they were just in the spiritual world and their consciousness is still very close to their original spiritual consciousness. So they might take birth in the planet of the sages or in the planets of the demigods. But because their desires are for material